Designing Chroma Depth 3D panels aren't as hard as you may think. If you've got some comic books, a photo editing software program, and a few other tricks I'm going to be showing you, it's not that hard. Chroma, Greek for color, uses depth to get a 3D effect. And these are the glasses. They use a thin plastic film that diffracts colors and separates them out. You know, kind of like the dark side of the moon. <laughs> Once these colors are separated, the red stands out and the blue looks like it goes back. And it stands out like about two feet and recedes about two feet. So you get like about four feet worth of depth. Now as a haunter, you can use that to your advantage. For example, if you look in this picture here, look at that giant red hand. Well, if that with the chroma depth glasses looks like it's two feet off the panel, that is very scary. And you can also use it to help things look even more 3D, like the rocks curve around. It's just a fabulous illusion for Halloween. Not only do you have red and blue in your coloring arsenal, you have all the other colors that go in between. This panel here is showing it, imagine like a staircase going left to right, from receding to advancing. With that in mind, you have the blues and the greens as receding colors, yellow is the mid color, and then the orange, the face, and the hand, red, is the advancing colors. So remembering how Chroma Death works, can you imagine the depth? Comic books are a great resource to get some of your ideas for the panels. They have lots of action. They're already outlined in black, which is important in Chroma Death because black separates, helps separate the colors for you so you get better depth. And so I go and I pick out different comic book scenes that I'm imagining could be helpful. So in my Photoshop program, I've collected all the different comic book scenes that I was thinking about using, and I treat it almost like a palette. These are things that I can pull different aspects, like I like the guy crouching with the snake there. So I pull them out and I put it into a black canvas on Photoshop, and I mess around with the colors and the scale, and I just keep manipulating it until it starts to look like what I was imagining in my mind. And I'm doing this while I'm wearing the Chroma Depth glasses. By the way, that black canvas that I'm using, that's the scale of what I'm going to be using uh, on the panel I'm actually painting. This is five inches by eight inches. The panel is five feet by eight feet. After you're done messing around with the color, you then outline the different subjects because Chroma Depth does need black to help separate the colors out from each other. So you can see I've kind of surrounded the outside of the snake and the other people on there so they get a bit more separation. Looking at it though, it needed something. It needed a background. So I got some barrels and I put it through a posterizing filter in Photoshop to help give it a comic book look. Then continue to mess around with the color and I needed it to be more black and then popped it behind there. And I'm thinking, okay, now it's starting to get a sense of place. I like that image a lot. Here I've now outlined the subjects. So they make a bit more sense. They were looking a little fuzzy and it really works with that comic book style. Shading is really important to help give it a 3D look, even without wearing the glasses. And then also add some different things that help make the image look alive. Like I wanted the lightning on the snakes to be a bit more fuzzy and electric looking and the lights to be a bit more hazy. Here's another panel using pipes this time as the background. You can use anything. I just found that you need to have some kind of far away background to make the chroma depth images make sense. These drips I hand drew in, which isn't that hard. I just make an outline. I have a tablet for my Photoshop when it makes it easier. So I make an outline of the toxic and then I fill in with using the fill bucket, total yellow. And then I start using some cool tools, um, dodge and burn to add highlights and dark lights to it to help make it look a bit more goopy and 3D. 
And then this awesome filter on Photoshop called Plastic Wrap, which really made it look toxic. Use some of the smudge tools drawn down to give it uh, where it's looking like it's going down. And then I just go back to my normal grabbing different comic pieces. And this one I wanted to make a bit more zombie-ish, so I added more skin to it. Again, wearing my glasses, I realized I didn't have enough depth, so I added in some blue and green toxic to give it some more 3D because I'm not using any red or orange here, so I needed a little bit more help. So have a blue background. Use all the tools in Photoshop that you can to add realism. Take little bits from comic books and change the scale and change the colors where in your chroma depth and just keep messing around with it until you're getting the action pack scene using the knowledge that red items advance off the panel two feet and blue items recede from the panel two feet. That's really gonna scare the heck out of your tots. Well, I thought I'd leave you by seeing the JPEG image and then how it turned out after I painted it. It's kind of a lot of fun for me because this took a lot of hours and in this video, this is just a few seconds. <laughs> so anyway, enjoy looking at these panels and thanks again for checking out another tutorial by me. Look for the other two building haunt wall panels and painting Chroma Depth 3D images. Thanks a lot. Take care.